Hello, this is Professor Hill. Welcome to the first video of Physics 2140. This video, we're going to talk about approximations. Approximations are very useful when we have complicated expressions where one variable may be much smaller than another variable. When that happens, we can simplify the expression, come up with a much more compact form, and, uh, and that could give us some insight into how the formula works at small distances or large distances. So when an expression contains a variable which will be much smaller than another variable, um, we can try to simplify it. For example, suppose we have the formula x plus epsilon, where epsilon is a Greek letter that often means something small. So we're going to assume in this case epsilon is much smaller than x. In that case, uh, for example, if x is equal to 10 to the 6th and epsilon is equal to 10 to the minus 6th, then clearly epsilon is much smaller than x. And if we add the two together, 10 to the 6th, 1 million, plus 10 to the minus 6th, 3, 4, 5, 1, 6, this is, can pretty well be approximated by just 1 million. Okay. So x plus epsilon can be approximated as just x when epsilon is much smaller than x. That's an approximation. And whenever we add a small quantity to a large quantity or subtract, those are the cases where we can make approximations. On the other hand, if we multiply a small number and a big number together, then notice in this case we're talking about 10 to the 6th times 10 to the minus 6th. That's equal to 1. It's not approximately equal to x or epsilon, and so we can't say anything about that. Similarly, if we divide them, again, not roughly x or, uh, or epsilon. So only when we add numbers together can we really try to approximate things. Now, approximations, as you might imagine, you can approximate things more or less to different degrees of accuracy. And the way we categorize these degrees of accuracy is we talk about the order of the approximation. So for example, consider the expression x plus epsilon cubed. Okay, now we can do this out. We can expand this expression completely and write this as x cubed plus 3x squared epsilon plus 3x epsilon squared plus epsilon cubed. Now because we assume that epsilon is very small compared to x, then if epsilon is small, epsilon squared is even smaller, and epsilon cubed is even smaller than that. Okay, so x cubed is much bigger than 3x squared epsilon, which is even bigger than 3x epsilon squared, and epsilon cubed is even smaller than that. So we can cut off this approximation depending on how accurate we want it to be. For instance, if we just write x plus epsilon cubed as being roughly x cubed, then we call that the uh, zeroth order in epsilon approximation. That approximation is to the zeroth order in epsilon because there's no epsilon in it at all. On the other hand, we could approximate this as x cubed plus 3x squared epsilon. Just keep the epsilon term, the term with epsilon to the first power, but leave out the epsilon squared and epsilon cubed terms. This is first order in epsilon. Okay? Or you can see the pattern now. We could approximate this by just dropping off the cubed part and write this as 3x epsilon squared, second order, and so forth. Okay? Now the zeroth order case is basically the limit is the limit of the expression as epsilon goes to zero. Okay? And that's often useful to know. You want to know if this thing gets completely, if this particular variable completely vanishes, uh, then what does the expression look like? But if I want to know not just what happens when it vanishes, but what happens as it gets smaller, what is its behavior as it approaches its limit, then we want to keep the, at least the first order term. So the first order tells us how 
it approaches the limit. And that is often very important to us. For example, if you have a single charge versus a dipole, the electric field goes to zero as you get far away from both of those, but the electric field goes to zero faster for the dipole than it does for the single charge. And so that's what a first order approximation would tell you, that um, something like that, that, that one way is going to zero faster than another way. Okay, a useful formula in making approximations uh, to first order is this formula. If you have a polynomial that looks like this, x plus epsilon to the nth power, then this can be approximated as x to the nth plus n times x to the n minus first times epsilon. And this is a first order approximation. Because you can see there's just the first power in epsilon. Okay? Um, and this assumes that epsilon is much smaller than x. So we can see this when n is an integer, it's pretty easy x plus epsilon to the first power is roughly x to the first power plus 1 times x to the zeroth power times epsilon. That's just x plus epsilon. Okay, that's not really an approximation. If we have x plus epsilon squared, that's roughly x squared plus 2 times x to the first epsilon. And so that's equal to x squared plus 2x epsilon. And that's just uh, the binomial expansion, but I'm dropping the epsilon squared term because I'm only looking at a first order approximation. If I have x plus epsilon cubed, then that's x cubed plus 3 x squared epsilon, okay, and so forth. But the nice thing about this formula is that it works even when n is not an integer or if n is a negative number, okay. So for example, 1 over x plus epsilon that can be written in this form, x plus epsilon to the negative first. And so that can be approximated as x to the negative first plus negative 1 times x to the minus 1 minus 1. That's negative 2 times epsilon. Or if I write that out, I get 1 over x minus epsilon over x squared. And it's often useful, we can get problems with signs here, it's useful to keep these three pieces separate and be very accurate about it. So you write n x to the n minus first epsilon. Okay, so 1 over x plus epsilon is roughly equal to 1 over x minus epsilon over x squared. Uh, let's, let's see a numerical example of this. If I want to take, um, uh, let's say, 1 over 1.02, okay? I could write that as 1 over 1, 1 over 1 plus 0 0.02. According to this formula, this can be approximated, if we think of this as x and this as epsilon, this can be approximated as 1 over 1 minus 0 0.02 over 1 squared. And so this is equal to 1 minus 0.02. So 1 over 1.02 is approximately equal to 0 0.98. Well, that's pretty interesting. That means that if I take 1 over uh, 1, 102%, that's equal to 98%. We can also do this with radicals. So if I have the square root of x plus epsilon, then that can be written as x plus epsilon to the 1 half. And that can be approximated as x to the 1 half plus 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1 is minus 1 half epsilon. Or uh, square root of x plus epsilon over 2 square roots of x. Okay, so for example, uh, the square root of 65 is equal to the square root of 64 plus 1. So we'll call this x, and we'll call that epsilon, and then this can be approximated as the square root of 64 plus 1 over 2 times the square root of 64. This is square root of 64 is 8, and 
1 over 2 times square root of 64 is 1 over 2 times 8. And so the square root of 65 is equal to 8 plus 1 sixteenth, which is uh, 8.0625. I don't have my calculator handy. Uh, if I pull my calculator out here, here we go. If I take the square root of 65, the square root of 65, according to my calculator, is equal to 8.06226. So that's pretty darn close. And here you have a way to do square roots when you don't have your calculator. Um, let's see an example that we looked at in class. In class, we looked at the electric field of a dipole. And we had an expression that looked like this. You may remember that, where we made the assumption that S, which was the spacing between the charges in a dipole, is much smaller than the distance to the target where we were calculating the electric field. Okay, We can uh, approximate these. 1 over x minus s over 2 squared, that can be written as x minus s over 2 to the negative half. Okay. This thing here is what we call x, and epsilon is negative s over 2, because that's smaller. And so this is approximately equal to x to the minus 2. Now plus, remember this is, it's, it's x to the n plus n, x to the n minus first epsilon. So we need plus n, which is negative 2, times x to the negative 3, n minus 1, times epsilon, which is minus s over 2. Okay, So that's 1 over x squared. There are two minus signs here. They cancel. The 2 cancels the 2 here. And we get 1 over x squared plus s over x cubed. If we do the second one, we get s x plus s over 2 to the negative 2. That's approximately equal to x to the minus second power plus negative 2 again. That's n x to the minus 3, and now this is just plus s over 2. So that's 1 over x squared minus s over x cubed. And if I put the two together, that's approximately equal to 1 over x squared plus s over x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus s over x cubed. The 1 over x squareds cancel, because we're subtracting, and then this, these minus signs become a positive, and so this is approximately equal to 2s over x cubed. And we see that's the form that we saw in class, with the 2s up here, and that the dipole field dies off as 1 over x cubed. So this is a technique to... Uh, uh, that you can use to simplify equations in the limit when one variable is much larger or much smaller than another. Uh, so we were going to use this in class a lot, and I, on your next homework assignment, I ask you to make a few of these approximations to do these calculations, and I do expect you to be able to do them. Not that I'm going to put a lot of emphasis on it, but I will be using it in class, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you will, might be confused. Thank you very much for watching, and... I will uh, see you.